My name is Dr. Nick Pullis. I'm a hand and microvascular surgeon at the Mayo Clinic. Today we're going to be conducting a brachial plexus exam. We start the brachial plexus exam by examining the active and passive range of motion of the joints, which helps us to appreciate the strength testing. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is bring your arms straight out in front as high as you can. So now we see his active motion here, nearly 180 degrees. You can relax. Thank you. And if there's any discrepancy, we follow that up with passive range of motion to ensure that his active range of motion equals his passive range of motion. So that was his forward flexion. And then we have him, can you come out to the side for us? All the way up, good, and all the way back down. And again, checking that and confirming that his passive range of motion is equal to his active range of motion. So with forward flexion and ab shoulder abduction complete, I next looked at external rotation. So I'm going to have you put your elbows at your side, and then keeping your elbows at the side, I'd like you to bring your palms out. So he has external rotation here to uh, approximately 70 degrees, and his passive range of motion, again, equals his active range of motion. Excellent. And the last thing for your shoulder motion I'd like you to do is to put your arm as high up on the back as possible. Turn around for me. He brings his index finger all the way up to his uh, thoracic spine. Thank you. With that complete, now we can test his shoulder strength testing. I start by having the patient standing behind the patient and ask the patient to shrug their shoulders to assess the trapezius. Please shrug your shoulders. And then providing some pressure, and that's full strength, five out of five. Next, I'm gonna have you bring your shoulder blades back together like you're standing at attention. Good, and here checking for symmetry between the two shoulder blades. Relax. I'm gonna have you turn to the front. So we've checked the rhomboids and the trapezius, and the next shoulder muscles that we test are the serratus. There's several ways that you can test the serratus for winging. We're going to do it from the front and the back here. What I'm going to have you do is hold your arm out here and push out against me. And with some resistance, I'm looking to see if his scapula remains in continuity with his rib cage. We'll have you turn around and face the other way and demonstrate that from the other side. Good. Nice and strong. And then, of course, important here to check for symmetry on the other side with some resistance. And he is symmetric on the other side. Good. You can turn back around. The latissimus tendon can be palpated in the back of the axilla. And the best way to assess the strength of this is to ask the patient to uh, pull their arm into their side while you provide some abduction force. So can you pull it into your side? Good. And I'm trying to abduct his arm and I can feel his latissimus tendon in there firing full strength, five out of five. So pull into the side, I'm trying to abduct and I can palpate there the tendon of his latissimus firing. Good, let's turn back to the front. Excellent, we'll then test his rotator cuff strength. Again, keep your elbow into your side and I'd like you to bring push against my fist here. Good, and I can provide some resistance against that. Good, at the same time with your elbow at the side, I'd like to have you come out and AB duct. Bring your arm towards me. Good. I can also, we'll do that again, feel his deltoid here firing, the posterior, uh, middle, and anterior deltoids. Good. Testing the three heads of the deltoid with forward flexion, palpating the anterior deltoid. Good. Relax. Coming out to the side. Again, full strength against resistance there. And then I stand behind him. I'm going to have you stay where you are. Can you lean forward for me? And I want you to bring your arms back. Swallow tail test, providing some resistance and feeling the posterior deltoid. Good, relax. Testing the subscapularis. I'm going to have you keep your hand on your belly and I'd like you to push your elbow against my fist. Testing the subscapularis, full strength. To test the two heads of the pectoralis muscle, I'm going to have you squeeze your two hands together as I try and pull them apart and I can palpate the tendon going towards the axilla, the clavicular head, as well as the sternal head of the pectoralis major muscle. Good. To test the elbow flexion strength, I have the patient bend their elbow on their own strength, assessing their active range of motion. Good. And comparing that to his passive range of motion, which here, active equals passive. With that established, we can next determine the muscle strength. I have him against resistance, bend his elbow, full strength, elbow flexion. To assess the biceps, we'll have him supinate, and we can palpate the biceps tendon. 
with his thumb up in neutral pronosupination, we can have him bend his elbow again and palpate the brachioradialis muscle and assess the strength of that as well. So we can now test the strength of his triceps. Can you straighten out your elbow? And you can straighten his elbow out with gravity eliminated. Good, relax. And then we can have him do it against resistance. Push. And he's got full elbow extension strength against resistance in his triceps. To test the median nerve, starting proximally with the pronator teres, I'm going to test it, assess his passive and active range of motion with pronation and supination. You can see here he has full passive supination or full active supination. Can you turn your palm down for me? And full active pronation, active equaling passive. With the elbow bent now, I'm going to ask you to turn your palm to the ground as I provide some resistance, assessing his pronator teres. And then I'm going to do the same thing with your elbow extended. Turn your palm down, providing some resistance and assessing the pronator quadratus. With his active and passive range of motion of his wrist established, I now assess the strength of the wrist flexors. I'd like you to bend your wrist towards your forearm for me, and I'm palpating his flexor carpi radialis tendon. Relax. When I bring his index and small finger together, I can see his palmaris longus. Now bend your wrist again towards my hand, and palpating and feeling the strength of that. And finally, though it's an ulnarly innervated muscle, I'm going to have him ulnarly deviate and flex, and I'm palpating his flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. Good. With the wrist range of motion and strength established, I then move back to the median nerve innervated musculature. I am going to assess his flexor digitorum superficialis of his long bend, please, and ring. And though not all patients will have an FDS of their small, this patient does. Moving on to the thumb, and I assess the flexion strength of his flexor pollicis longus. So he bends his thumb down. Good. And his thenar muscles, I'm going to hold your thumb there, and I'm going to push against you and you provide resistance while I'm palpating the thenar musculature. Good. Finally, the median nerve innervated hands intrinsics. If you can bend at these knuckles and try and straighten out, testing the lumbricals to the index and long fingers, which are full strength. All right, the radial nerve has already been tested with the triceps and the brachioradialis uh, with elbow flexion and extension strength, and we can now test the strength of the supinator. I'd like you to turn your palm back up as I provide some resistance. Palm up. And that assessed the supinator, and we had already tested supination strength in elbow flexion with his biceps. Now we're going to, going to assess through the radial nerve his, elbow, his wrist extension strength. We have the patient actively extend his wrist, and we're palpating the second extensor compartment tendons. You can see in this individual, there's no radial deviation with wrist extension, as may be seen in lower radial nerve palsies. And I can also, in this position, assess his ECU by having him extend in an ulnarly deviated position and palpating the ECU tendon. Good. With his wrist extended, having the patient extend their fingers and testing MCP extension strength. We can assess each joint individually as well and have him extend his index finger, EIP and EDC, and the small finger. And the EDM tendon can be palpated in the fifth extensor compartment. We can assess the radially innervated uh, musculature to the thumb by having the patient extend their thumb and providing resistance proximally and palpating the first extensor compartment tendons, looking at APL and EPB, and then distally extend your thumb, providing resistance to thumb IP extension and palpating the extensor pollicis longus tendon. Lastly, assessing the function of the ulnar nerve, we had previously assessed the strength of his FCU tendon, can you bend your wrist towards you and towards your small finger as well? Good, and palpating the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. Good. We next assess the FDP strength of the ring and small finger, starting with the ring finger. Can you bend the tip of your finger, please? And the small finger. Good. We move on to hand intrinsic musculature, similar to the median nerve function. 
have the patient bend at the MCPs and attempt to extend at the IP joints of the ring and small finger. Lastly, we look at palmar and dorsal inter -osei. Can you spread your fingers? And we provide resistance strength to that, being sure to palpate the abductor digiti minimi to ensure that his abduction is being provided by his hand intrinsics and not by his EDC tendon. Relax. We assess the thumb adductor strength by having you pinch. Can you pinch your thumb in for me? Good. And palpating the first dorsal interosseous muscle. We can establish in a seated position his passive wrist range of motion and then have the patient perform active wrist range of motion to confirm that his active range of motion is equal to his passive range of motion. From there we can attest, assess better the strength of his wrist flexors. I'm going to have you bend your wrist towards your forearm and I'm palpating, without letting him use his fingers, I'm palpating the FCR tendon. You can see here he also has a strong palmaris tendon. And though it's an ulnarly innervated muscle, I can have him bend his elbow with ulnar deviation and palpate the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. Returning to the median nerve innervated musculature, we assess his finger flexion strength with his FDS to his long ring and small fingers, which this individual does have. We can assess the FDP strength of his index and long fingers. Can you bend the tip, please? And the tip of this finger. Good. And then on to the thumb. I'm going to have you bend the tip of your thumb, please, against resistance. Good. And his thumb intrinsic musculature with your thumb position there. I'm going to push against you if you could leave it there. And I'm palpating his thenar musculature in particular assessing the strength of his APB tendon. I'm going to have you do it one more time down here. Ensuring that he's not using his radially innervated first extensor compartment tendons to provide the resistance. Moving on to the radial nerve and the radial wrist extensors. Can you extend your wrist for me? Without using your fingers. Bend your wrist back. We can palpate the second extensor compartment tendons as well as the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon. Good, relax. Moving on to the digital finger flexors. With the wrist extended, I'm going to ask the patient to straighten out his fingers, providing resistance to MCP extension. Good. And in the thumb, assessing his CMC extension. Can you pull your thumb up? Palpating the first extensor compartment tendons, as well as your MCP straight. And finally, the extensor pollicis longus, palpating the third extensor compartment tendon. We can individually test the EIP and EDM. Can you straighten your fing index finger out, please? And your small finger, palpating the tendons individually. Finally, the ulnar nerve, though I frequently assess the FCU when I'm assessing wrist flexor strength. Can you bend your wrist? and I'm going to have you only deviate and bend, palpating the FCU tendon. Good. Next, assessing the digital flexors, the FDP to the ring and small finger. Can you bend the tip of your ring finger? And the tip of your small finger. Good. The finger or the hand intrinsic musculature is then assessed. I'm going to ask the patient to spread his fingers on the table. And you can see him using his EDC tendons, but as I provide resistance, I'm palpating the EDM as well as the inter -osei as I ask him to abduct his fingers. Can you squeeze your fingers in for me? And as I try to abduct his fingers, they stay tight to the table with no Wartenberg sign. I move to the thumb where I'm going to ask him to, sorry, I move to the thumb where I'm going to ask you to bring your thumb into your hand and I'm palpating his first dorsal inter -osei. and I'm going to have you hold your thumb there as I move it as well as his adductor pollicis. 
Lastly, I look at the lumbrical function by asking the patient with his MCP joints flex to extend his fingers, and I'm assessing the strength of his IP joint extension through his median in the index and long, and ulnarly innervated lumbrical musculature. We can further assess the hand intrinsic musculature vis-a-vis -vis the thumb by asking the patient to squeeze a piece of paper, ensuring there's no flexion at the IP joint indicative of a Froman sign.